At this point, we have derived the six kinematics equations mathematically. However, physics is an experiment-based subject, which means all the theories should be able to be tested by experiments and can be verified by exper experimental data. And this is what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna be using the smart card to do an experiment to verify the kinematics equations. The actual lab is very uh, simple. What you do is you set up a ramp uh, and then you just uh, simply roll the smart card down the track, just like this. Okay. And uh, although I do want to caution you that uh, you may want to catch the card before it hits the end stop because even though like technically this has magnets this has magnets like poles repel uh, it should act as a buffer uh, like this so that the card uh, will be fine however i noticed that this uh, magnetic force is not big enough to buffer the card when it, when it comes down from um, this high uh, then it will end up just hit the end stop so you may want to catch it before it hits the uh, end stop. Okay, that's one thing uh, to be careful. And also I want to show you how do you set up your SparkView app. This time uh, you want to have all position, velocity and acceleration graph on there, on the same page. So what you do is you select position, and then you add another axis and you select velocity, add another one and select acceleration, All right? And then uh, for the frequency, 50 hertz would be good. All right? And then you click on start and you can roll the card down the track. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's good. So those are all the data you need and you can see um, when the card rolled down a track, it is a constant acceleration motion. As for why, uh, we'll, we'll go into details on that when we talk about dynamics. But for kinematics, you haven't learned the force yet. So I'm just telling you when the card going down the track, it is uh, the acceleration is constant. Okay, And as can be seen by the BT graph, you can see the velocity increase at a constant uh, rate. And correspondingly, your uh, PD graph is a parabola with the slope increasing, right? And then uh, your acceleration graph, AT graph, will be a horizontal line, which is uh, indicated uh, on the graph here, okay? And uh, initially and uh, at the end, there is something where it happened uh, because you, you have to start from zero, right? And uh, when you stop the card, and there's gonna be sharp uh, increase or decrease in uh, all those variables. So uh, you're gonna just look at the part of the graph that is um, during the period of time when the card is normally just going down the track. So just uh, this part of the graph, let me show you. Yeah, probably just look, be looking at uh, yeah, this section of PT, this section of BT, this section of AT, okay? All right, now let's uh, go into a bit more details on how do we analyze uh, the graph and the data. All right, so uh, to save some time, uh, I'm actually using a previous trial uh, I did and uh, analyzed. So I'm using the graph and data from that trial and you can tell that I zoomed in uh, on the graph a little bit so that I can see uh, the, each individual point better. 
uh, you basically just pinch uh, on the screen to zoom in and zoom out until you can see it uh, properly. And I will be using um, this section of the graph, uh, this section of uh, the PT graph, this section of the BT graph, and this section of the AT graph. Okay. Uh, what you do with the data and the graph is you're going to decide an initial state of motion, an initial position, velocity, and acceleration. And then you're going to decide a final position, velocity, and acceleration. And you'll be working with those data. All right. And as for uh, where is the initial, where is the final, it doesn't matter as long as uh, it's w uh, within um, a reasonable range. Uh, like uh, already uh, mentioned, uh, this part of the graph is probably good for analysis, whereas uh, the rest of it are kind of at the end, uh, data get funny. So just uh, in this section of the data, pick an initial and pick a final. All right, so what can be our initial? Let's say, oh, by the way, you want to use this tool. Show multiple coordinate tool. So this will uh, help you select data across uh, multiple coordinates. Okay, so click on that. Uh, you can see there's a line here. You can drag it and it shows you position, velocity, and acceleration at a certain time. So my initial, I'll just pick anywhere, maybe 0 0.16. Okay, that's my initial. But you can pick it anywhere uh, within this uh, the rectangle I was showing you. Uh, that's my initial. Then I'll be taking a screenshot. Okay, if you're doing it on your phone, take a screenshot on your phone. And then my final, I'll make it somewhere here. Let's say 0 0.48. So that's my final. So you see my final position, velocity, and uh, acceleration. And then you take a screenshot. And those are the data that you're going to be working with. All right, so let's take a look at how do we use those data to verify kinematics uh, equations. All right, uh, again, uh, here are my screenshots of the data, and those are the initials, initial position, initial velocity, initial acceleration, and those are my final position, velocity, acceleration. So those are the kinematics equations. As a group, I want to, to verify three of the kinematics equations except uh, for this one, because the uh, smart card doesn't really give you the average velocity directly. So those five kinematics equations, pick three to analyze. Uh, you know what, uh, except these, this as well, because technically this is the same as that, they are equivalent, okay? So those four, one, two, three, four. Pick three to verify. I will show you one example with the first equation here. Okay. All right. So what do we do? Basically, for this equation, v, v f equals to v i plus a t, I'm going to take the initial from the graph, which is 0 0.37 here, and the acceleration here, 1.634, and the time, which is uh, my final time, 0 0.48, minus my initial time, 0 0.16, 0 0.32. So I take those three values, and I plug them into the right side of the first equation. So bi plus at and I calculate V final, Vf. If this equation is correct, then my calculated V final, Vf, should be fairly close, 
from this V V final measured by the smart card on the graph. And I can calculate the percentage error. Okay. So if you pick other equations, it's the same thing. For example, the third equation, uh, you can uh, plug in V I, T, and A and get displacement and compare this calculated displacement with the displacement on the graph. Okay, uh, same thing here, calculate V final, compare with the V final on the graph, uh, the same with the second equation. Basically the idea is you take the measurement from the graph and you plug them into the right side of the equation, to the right side of the equation, and then you get a calculated value and then you compare that value with the measured value on the graph. All right, uh, let me actually show you how it is done with uh, our example, equation number one. All right, so our V initial is a 0 0.37, acceleration is 1.634, and time is 0 0.32. By the way, uh, here I want to, uh, and, you and you probably have noticed that too, acceleration, I'm using the initial acceleration. Because uh, technically, okay, let's go back. The acceleration uh, should be constant throughout. However, if you noticed, uh, the acceleration is actually not that constant. Uh, we have initial 1.634 and the final is 1.625 and the values in between them are also varies a little bit. So it's actually a non-constant non motion uh, because it's, it's the real world, right? Real world data. But you, it doesn't really make too much difference. Especially you can see the vari variation in acceleration is very small. Uh, you can pick uh, either the initial acceleration or you can pick the final acceleration. It doesn't really matter too much or you can pick any values in between, okay? Uh, and um, I do believe there is a question uh, in the discussion section uh, asking you about how do you deal with this non-constant uh, acceleration motion uh, situation with the uh, graph, you using the graph, uh, what is the best way to get acceleration uh, with the graph? And that's why you can uh, think about which acceleration is the best to use or how do I get the best acceleration to use? So, but other than that, for your calculation, uh, you can just uh, use either the initial, like I'm using my initial uh, acceleration, or I can use the final, or I can use any value in between, okay? All right, so that is why uh, my acceleration here is 1.634, and uh, this is V initial, and this is a time, and then I plug, plug it into VI plus AT, and calculate VF, uh, this is what I get, 0.893. So this is my calculated value of VF, 0.893. And the VF measured by the smart card is uh, over here, 0 0.881. And now I'm gonna compare those two values by doing a percentage error analysis. So what I do is I take my calculated value I minus the measured value by the smart card divided by the measured value by the smart card. And I get a percentage error of 1.36%, which basically shows the equation uh, is correct, right? Because uh, our we're using real data and the percentage error is almost just 1%. So that's pretty good. And this would be an example of how you use the data uh, from the smart card to verify uh, kinematics equations. Right.
So this equation is correct since our percentage error is so small. And, uh, and you'll be working with three out of the four, okay? So you can choose to do this one like I did, that's fine, but you also have to pick the other two, okay? And um, as a group, I only need you to hand in one lab report. So if your group has three people, you can have each person to do one equation, right? And also, once uh, you get your data, oh, hold on a second. Once you get your data, you may want to save it. So save as, and then that will be saved as a, uh, in the form of a Spark Lab. And then later uh, you can also import this file into your Spark View app. Then you will be able to see all the graph and the data. So you may want to save it in case you want to uh, go back to your graph and uh, pick some other um, data to analyze.